This video is a review of the classical wave equation and its application to the vibrating string. So we want to study classical waves because quantum mechanics is essentially the study of quantum waves and there are a lot of analogies to how these quantum waves or wave functions behave that we can learn from the behavior of classical waves so we can see what is the same and what's different but it gives us a base to move forward from. So for a wave, we're talking about some wave amplitude, this function u. It's a function of x, spatial uh, coordinate, and t, the time coordinate, just one dimension here in space, x. It's going to have some velocity <clears throat> that we can choose, v. And this is going to obey the classical wave equation, that the second partial derivative with respect to space of this amplitude is equal to 1 over velocity squared times the second partial derivative with respect to time. And that's the classical wave equation that is true for any classical wave. And the way we went about finding the general solution to this was asserting separation of variables, that you can separate this amplitude into a function of space and a function of time, and we found a general form for that. Then we applied the specific boundary conditions of a vibrating string, namely that you have a kind of box here of length L, and you say that the amplitude of the wave is, is 0 at x equals 0 and 0 at x equals L for all time, and that imposes these boundary conditions, which lead to some quantization over here. So the general solutions we have for this vibrating string in this box here are that you have some amplitude, and then you have a function which is a cosine in time, so this is oscillatory back and forth in time, and then it's also oscillatory in space, there's a sine function in space, so you can have this n being an integer here, you can either have 1, 2, 3, etc., as many as you want oscillations in space, and then your velocity is going to get faster and faster as you go up to higher and higher n. So those are standing waves because they don't move back and forth in time, they just move up and down. But then we saw in the animation that you can take linear combinations of these individual normal modes, these standing waves, and you can use that to represent any function which obeys these boundary conditions. So that's a very common technique that when you use these types of separation of variables, you impose boundary conditions, you get this quantization condition where you have this finite set of n, where these are each integers, where we have the sum here. And this can be used to represent any function, and we can get a wave which moves back and forth and has any behavior we want. And we saw several examples of how those waves can behave when you choose different uh, values of the amplitude for each individual normal mode.